Hey there, welcome back to Kim Yetta Connects. Of course, this is the place where we focus on living free by faith and always on fire for Jesus Christ. Now, if you're watching this video and you have not seen part one, you've got to go and watch part one. And I promise you, I will put the link in the description, but this is part two, as we're looking for a great model for how we are to live. And we want to, of course, look at the life of Jesus. Now, if you're not a subscriber and you need practical, simple, biblical, spiritual, encouraging words to help you in your faith, I encourage you to please click the subscribe button because I put out videos every Tuesday and Friday. God willing, I can't exactly tell you what time those videos come out, but please subscribe and please share if there are people you know that absolutely need something. So in our first video, we began to study. I told y'all the story about how my husband and I are reading my book, Mission Me, my first book I wrote. And then we're in week three, or we just finished week three, and we decided why don't we be private investigators and do a character study of Jesus so we can get to know Jesus more intimately. And so, so far, Mark 1 and 12, we learn Jesus is obedient. Mark 1, 25, we learn Jesus is fearless. Mark 2 and 5, we learn Jesus was empathetic. So we did all of that on the first video. Next, let's continue in Mark. And we're going to go to Mark 2, 19 through 22. Mark 2, 19 through 22. Because there's an important word uh, in Mark 2, 19 through 22, uh, where well, we learn more about Jesus. Remember the whole purpose in learning more about Jesus is so we can know how to live. So I'm in the NIV Bibles and um, Jesus was being questioned about fasting by the, fa um, the Pharisees, of course. And Jesus answered them. So they are at, I'll start at 18. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, how is it that John's disciples and the disciples of Pharisees are fasting, but your disciples are not? Remember, they're, people, they're always looking for way, uh, reasons to accuse Jesus. Or do you have that in your own life where you, you are constantly being accused of something, whether it's work-related, whether it's in your relationship, and it's really unclear um, why. Uh, the enemy, you have to remember now, the enemy is an accuser. He's going to always accuse you. Jesus was accused, but look how Jesus handled it. It says, Jesus answered, how can guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. And on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. If he does, the new piece will pull away from the old making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wine skins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. No, he pours new wine into new wine skins, okay? Now on the surface, you might be thinking, Wait a minute, what now? Remember, Jesus spoke in a lot of parables and, and Jesus spoke in ways that would make you stop and think. Well, in this passage and many more like it, what I saw, Jesus was wise. Could he have given them an intellectual tongue lashing? Could he have, um, um, and we can do that. Can't we do that, you all, in our everyday lives? Can't we engage people in verbal sparring? Of course we can. But that's not what Jesus did. Jesus began to ask them a series of questions. The next time you have a, a situation where you have to properly manage conflict, how are you going to handle it? I say... Think about how wise Jesus was and how he constantly spoke in parables, gave metaphors, and he asked questions, questions to get you to think about what he's saying. So I said Jesus was wise, and if Jesus is wise, Kim Yetta 
I can be wise as well. Mark 2 and 11, in that same passage, Mark 2 and 11. Grab my glasses again. Remember, how can we live this Christian life? Well, focusing on how Jesus lived, okay? So Mark 2, 11, but we'll start at verse 8. Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things again? He's asking questions, which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven or to say, get up, take your mat and walk, but that you may know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take up your mat and walk. The man got up, took up his mat, and he walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone. And they praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. Last thing I want to leave you with is Jesus had authority. Jesus had authority. Uh, when I learned this years ago, I began to pray differently. I began to pray with authority. I began to pray with a heck of a lot more faith. And there's nothing wrong with that. Why? Because there's authority, not haughtiness, not arrogance, but it's with a decisiveness in my heart. Um, when we are believers in Jesus Christ, he wants us to live um, in authority. Um, Luke 10, 19, and speaking to um, the disciples, he says, look, I have given you all authority, all power to tread on serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall harm you. And so you have that same power to live in authority. And if Jesus has it, the Holy Spirit's on the inside of you, then so do you. So I ask you, why don't you live in any kind of authority? If you're struggling with that, let Jesus be your guide. Amen. So thank you so much for watching. I hope these two little lessons about the character traits of Jesus have been helpful for you. The spirit of Christ is on the inside of you so you can live the Christ I for you to live. Remember to be free forever. God bless you and thanks for watching.